Imagine a world in which doing R coding and producing graphics and tables, et cetera, et cetera, and creating a Word document or a PDF or a PowerPoint presentation could all be done in one place, right? So that as your data gets updated or as new data arrives, the document that you're creating is updated in real time and always up to date. You don't have to recreate it ever. All of that can be done with Parto. Exciting times. Stick with me. You are going to love this. I promise you. On this YouTube channel, we're creating our programming videos on everything. Now, some of you may be familiar with R Markdown, which is the exact same concept. In actual fact, Quarto is really just an extension of that. It is using R Markdown. It's just much, much easier to use, and you're going to see why in just a second. What you're looking at on the screen right now is a PDF that I created in Quarto, right? And it was super easy to do, and I'm going to teach you exactly how to do that. And as you can see from this PDF, um, you can create citations and a bibliography. You can create cross references between tables, uh, and and uh, you can I mean you can create the tables themselves in Quarto and the graphics, and it inserts them automatically. It's very exciting. It's all automated. It's not difficult to do. And the PDF you're looking at right now, this is a PDF about how to use Quarto, and I'm going to make this PDF available to you as a download at the end of this video. I'm going to tell you how to do that. So stick with me. Lots to learn. Exciting times. Boom shakalaka. So here we are. We're in our studio, and I'll just tell you how I got to. This is a Quarto document that I've created. I've started, and how I got there is I clicked on File, a New File, Quarto Document. You could also push Quarto Presentation. If you click on that, a couple of options pop up. You can put in a title. You can put in the author. You don't have to. You can choose HTML, PDF, Word document. You don't. You can change that, by the way. So once you're in the document, you're not committed to that. You could. You could also make it a presentation or make it something interactive. I'm going to hit Cancel here. But once, if you did that, it would bring you to where we are right now. Here you can see it says format HTML. I could change that to PDF, for example, or docx, which would, which would be a Word document. I'm going to stick with HTML for now. Um, and there are other parameters you can stick into the front of the document that will determine everything about the document going forwards. And I'm not going to get into too much of that right now. I really want you to get the basics and the most useful features of Quarto from this video. So let's go through the very basics. And, and the, f the first heading that I've got here is text and images. And I'm just going to show you. Uh, you can add text here just like a word processor. OK, and that will become part of your document. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. OK, you can also, let's say, for example, you want to in insert a picture, right? There's a little picture icon up there. Or you can go to insert figures and images. Uh, either would work. And we can browse. And we'll see uh, as we hit browse, I will just quickly find a picture. I've got it in pictures. And there's a picture of me. And you can pop it in there. And that'll stick that image into the document. OK, that's me looking much younger. Right, the next thing, and you can, and you can add parameters around that picture, by the way. You can add a caption. You can do all sorts of things. You can make it referenceable. And I'm going to teach you how to do that in just a minute. The next thing about this, and this is why it's different from a regular word processor, is you can insert chunks of code. And you can decide whether or not that code is going to be included. In other words, whether people will see the code in the final rendered document or whether that code will be invisible, right? So the first code that I'm going to show you right here, I've, I've got I've, the first subheading that I've got here. Oh, and by the way, um, you know, if you select text, you can say this is heading one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. We could make this into a hyperlink and stick a URL in there. Another uh, very, very nice little feature, by the way, before I carry on, if, if we go back up to our text over here, is you can put a little back tick around some text, and that text will be highlighted in, 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 in the document. So there's a couple of little tip, tips and tricks. I'm not going to go into every single little detail in this lesson. But our first code chunk, and we call this a code chunk, uh, we've got some code, and I want this code to appear in the document. And so um, I haven't given an instruction for it to disappear. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. What I have done is I've said message equals false and warning equals false. And that means that when I run this, when it automatically runs this bit of code, library tidyverse, it's going to go and fetch the tidyverse library. Ordinarily, when you run that code, and you will have seen this in your console when you run it, a whole lot of messages come up, and sometimes there's some warnings, et cetera, et cetera. I don't want any of that in the document. So I've asked 
the, the, this R chunk not to include that with these little parameters, message equals false, warning equals false. And the lesson that I'm trying to teach you here is that um, you can add parameters into this heading of your chunk that change how the chunk behaves. Uh, and that's a really, really powerful feature of our markdown, and it's very easy to use. It's super duper easy to use. You're gonna absolutely love it. Now, what I didn't teach you, and let me just do that right now, is how to create a chunk itself. You can either go to, uh, I think uh, you can, at the top here, you can say insert, and it'll pop in. And by the way, it doesn't have to be R. You can stick in Python. You can put in other languages. Um, the other thing you can do is a little shortcut. Uh, so if I was here and I wanted to create a shortcut, I'd just push forward slash, and all of the possible things, there's R, Python, all of the possible things that you could insert come up as a little uh, as a little cheat menu. Okay, so here we've got a little bit of code. We've said message equals false, warning equals false. It's not gonna include those in our final render document. Um, it is gonna include everything else in this chunk. If you look at our next chunk here, and here I've just got uh, uh, some data that's gonna, uh, some coding that's gonna create a graphic. I've included some other parameters. And this is really where things get powerful. The first one is echo equals false. What that means is that the code isn't gonna appear in the final document, right? The output of the code will, in other words, the graphic that I'm creating here is gonna be in the rendered document, but not the code itself, okay? And there's all sorts of versions of that. You can actually put in parameters that say, uh, you know, don't include either. And I've got, an, you know, so there's all sorts of options here, but this is this is probably one of your more useful parameters. Echo equals false. Again, I've said message and warnings equals false. And what else have I got here? I've got label equals fig forward uh, dash Star Wars, right? Because I know that I'm, cre I'm creating a plot, I want this figure to have a label because I might want to refer to it at some other point in the document. And you can do that. You can cross-reference it with, with a hyperlink and it'll take you to that point in the document. It's quite clever, right? So I've said label fig uh, dash Star Wars. And, and you have to do it that way, by the way. You've got to say fig dash and then the name after it, right? This is, this is the format. And then I've said fig.cap, right? Because I want this to have a caption underneath. And that has to be in inverted commas. And I've got here a relationship between height and mass of Star Wars characters. Right, that, those are all of my parameters. And after that, it's just regular code, Star Wars, blah, 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 blah. I'm not gonna go through this code at the moment. You've, we've got done this in other lessons. And you're gonna see when we render this document, it's gonna create a caption. And later on in this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to reference this and get back to it with a cross-reference. Okay, so exciting times. Now, let's go ahead and render this document by clicking render, and we're gonna have a look at what the outputs are. Here we go, and if I this is obviously an HTML document. There's the picture that we inserted. Obviously, we can change the size, et cetera, et cetera. All of that is, is doable. First code chunk, the code appears in the document. Second code chunk, we don't see the code, but we see the output, okay? That's where we are so far. Let's keep going. Boom, shakalaka. The next thing I wanna show you is how to get the output of some code into the text itself, right? So we've been producing uh, tables and, and plots where you've got text and then you interrupt the text by putting in a chunk of code and the output of that code can pop into your document. But what about if in the middle of a sentence you want a data point that comes out of your data set, right? Easy peasy, let's have a look here. I've got the average height of Star Wars characters is blank in meters, okay? So in order to create a bit of code that is inserted there, you put a little back tick, uh, you put R, okay? You put some code and then another back tick. Uh, and I've just done that so you can see how this works. Here we go. I'm gonna type in the code here, right? So what we wanna do is we want the mean of Star Wars height. Uh, we wanna divide that, ooh, and we wanna say um, NA remove equals true. Otherwise it won't create the mean because there's some missing values. We want to divide that by 100 to turn it from centimeters into meters. And the other thing we want to do is we want to round this off to two decimal places, close brackets. Okay, so we render that and see if it worked. And boom, shakalaka, here we go. The average height of Star Wars characters is 1.74 in meters, or we could have just said meters. Okay, I should have just said meters. But you can see how it works, perfect. 
very happy with that. Let's keep going. Now remember earlier on, we gave a label to the figure that we created. Okay, the star, like up here, we created a Star Wars figure and we said label equals fig dash Star Wars. Later on in the document, we can cross reference and we can do this with tables as well, by the way. So we've got here is a reference to and then it's just at fig forward slash Star Wars. Okay, and when this is rendered and we've already rendered this document, so, so this will be done. I don't have to re-render it, but here we go. Here is a reference to fig dot one and if we click on that, it'll take us up to that figure. And by the way, it will always keep the right order, right? So whatever order you've created your figures in, it will number them correctly and keep them in the right order. So it really is thinking ahead. Beautiful stuff, boom shakalaka, let's keep going. Okay, another little feature, and there's so many things you can insert, because as I say, this is just like working within a, you know, a Word document or any other, any other word processor. We can insert a call out, or there's different things you can, but like call outs are quite fun. I can say, is this a note? I'm gonna call this a warning. Uh, caption, I'm gonna say, warning, remember to use sun screen. Okay, and it created this. Uh, I just gotta check that it, it's called it heading two. I want this just to be normal text and then it's created all of this space. Let's just not do that. And if we render this, let's click render. There you go, warning, warning, remember to use sunscreen. Okay, it just sticks it right in there. And there's lots of these little features that you can really turn your document into something beautiful. Now at the end of your document, you're gonna to wanna to have a bibliography, easy peasy. Let me show you how you do that. And I've got something here, but I wanna just show you how I got here. Uh, here's some text that needs citing. Uh, if you go in here and hit insert, go down, here we go, at citations, up comes a box. You can choose the database that you wanna use. There's PubMed, I would usually use that because I'm a doctor and I use a lot of medical literature, but whatever you wanna put in there, uh, you, you type in your search, uh, it will do the search from within you. There's lots and lots of ways that you can get your citations in here and I'm not gonna get it. This, that's like a, a lesson all of its own, but just so that you can see more or less how this works, you can select your citation. It creates an entry here. There it's created an extra entry. And when we render this, our bibliography will have that additional entry. Now, what I often do here is I include a page break, particularly if I'm creating a PDF. It doesn't really matter if you're rendering in HTML. But if you're creating a PDF, you want your bibliography to be on a new page, right? It's the end of your document, you've finished all of your text, you want a nice fresh page with a heading, and you can see I've created a new heading there, heading one, bibliography, and then it'll create it'll create the bibliography underneath that. How did I create this page break? I used uh, insert uh, short code, right? And then inside here, I, I typed a page break, right? And it creates a page break. Let's render that and you'll see it's in, in, included the citations. Okay, and here we can see the new citation that I stuck in right over there. Uh, I don't even know what it is, I clicked on it randomly, uh, but it is hyperlinked, and then of course down in the bibliography, down here it's included all of the details of that citation. Here it's just put a little line because it's an HTML. If this was a PDF, it would actually create a new page at that point. Okay, so on your screen right now is the PDF that is available to you as a download. You can go through, and I've got a lot of detail in this PDF, really, a, a lot of the more commonly used uh, constraints and, and useful uh, commands, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this PDF is available with all of the other resources that I have. I've got a resource library, everything there is absolutely free. Click on the link that's on the screen right now and download this and enjoy Quarto. Happy days. See you soon. Take care.